So if you don't want to see your name or like, you know, doesn't show the name, we just hide your name because I'm going to record this video again. Uh, if you have a between negative one to one, we call geometric series set. Okay. Make sure you have a summation happening. It's called the convergent to that one. The, if R is between bigger than one or less than negative one, it will be the divergent. So summation doesn't approach A number. So it will be divergent. Yeah? The, one more thing to we did is a divergent test. This is actually the most easy test for us. If you just take the limit, limit of the A of N, then if limit to say it's not equal to zero, which means summation is divergent. Okay, that's a divergent test. Okay, so far we did the two tests. So today I'm gonna do the three, at least I wanna cover the three or four tests. Okay. So 11.3, it's called the integral test. It's called the integral test. Okay. So in general, it is dif difficult to find the exact sum. Exact sum means if you add a bunch of the numbers together, what's the sum? So it's definitely difficult to find the, what's the exact sum. That normally you don't find the sum. But this what we can find is, is the answer becomes the convergent or divergent. So it's city is convergent or divergent. Just we are not going to find what's the sum because definitely it's, it's really hard. At least we can check if this summation becomes a convergent or divergent. That's what we're going to do. Then if you really want to find the exact sum, there's only two techniques with it. If you want to find the exactly find exact sum, one is that one. You don't have a choice. This is the only form that we have how to find the sum. Okay, geometric series. Okay. There is one more. Do you know there is one more we did Tuesday? Finding a sum. Which one is the guy? Partial fractions. When you did the partial fractions, we can find exactly what's the sum. Otherwise, you cannot find the sum. Only we can say it's convergent or divergent. Okay? So, or, partial fractions. So exam, if my exam say finding the sum, means you have to use more one of them. It's a geometric series or partial fractions. The most of the questions I'm not going to ask finding a sum. Most of the questions I'm going to ask, is this convergent or divergent? That's the all most, most of the questions you'll be asked. Okay, so here's the question, first question, okay? So I have n equal 1 to infinity, the 1 over n square. So plug in the 1, 1 square, right? 1 over 1 square, 1 over 2 square, right? If I plug in the 2, 2 square. Next one, plug in the 3, 3 square. Next one, I plug in the 4, 4 square. So let's put the bunch of the summations, fraction together. So what's the answer? Pretty much without computer, probably you cannot find it. But here is I use a computer, let's say. Okay. So I put the five minutes, one over one square, one over two square, one over three square, one over four square, until one over five square, summation is that number. Then I did until 10th, you know, until one over 10 square, I got that number. So this number meaning how many n's you added. So I did the 5,000. Which means until 1 over 5,000 square. Did you see the number? What happened to the sum? Here is 1.6350. Here is 1.6429. Here is 1.64... What's that? 1.6439. 1.6447. You can see it's almost 1.6 something, right? It's a 1.64. 
So if you add a bunch of the dust summations, you can say assume maybe near 1.64. So we can say this is convergent. Because almost my summation become 1.64 something. Okay, let's say that this number, 1 over 1 square root of the n. I put the 1 over 1 square root of the 1, 1 over 1 square root of the 2, 1 over square root of the 3, 1 over square root of the 4. So this is the chart. So I put the until 1 over square root of the 5. I got the 3.231. 1 over square root of the 10. I got the that number. So until I did 1 over, yeah. Square root of the 5,000, I add it. Did you see the number? What's really happening? Number is getting so huge. So probably next one is more big and bigger number coming. Right? Because 139.968. If you put the 1,000 until 61.80, it's, did you see the how gap, how big it's become? So what's really happening is this one, it doesn't convert. Oh, I can see this is what's happening. It's going to be infinity. If you put the more additions, it's going to be the infinity. So it's be the divergent. Why? How do you know this is become the convergent? But this guy become the divergent. Looks like almost, almost the same fractions happening. Right? 1 over n square, but this is 1 over square root of the n. I know it's a little different fractions. But it's pretty much a bunch of the fractions we are adding. But this one goes divergent. But this guy goes convergent. How can I know it? Okay. Did you see? Why? Why this one goes convergent, but this guy goes divergent? Why is that? Key is here, though. 1 over n square, this is 1 over square root of the n, right? If we put the numbers here, this guy, can you see that? This graph and the difference of the dot graph. Hi. Hey. You can make a show for that. Mm -hmm. What happened to my denominator if you plug in the number? One square, two square, three square, four square. This guy is the square root of the 1, square root of the 2, square root of the 3, square root of the 4. This guy goes, this number goes quickly, right? Bigger, getting bigger and bigger and bigger so quickly. This one is getting bigger and bigger, but it's not so, it's, it's a kind of a speed. How quickly going to getting close to zero? This guy probably graph-wise is go that way, but this guy, Go that way. Does that make sense, you guys? Okay, stop me if you don't understand what am I saying, okay? If you put the number here, it be the square. That means denominator become the bigger and bigger and bigger so quickly. That means it's approaching the x-axis quickly. But this one, slightly approaching the x-axis. That's why if you find the area, or if you find the number, this guy, number is becoming smaller and smaller, smaller, so quickly. But this guy, still, you can say the number is still big enough. So it doesn't approach the zero so quickly. That's why this means it's be the divergent. But this one, it's, it's be the convergent. Because number is so quickly zero. This one doesn't go quickly zero. It's not enough. It's not a fast enough. That's the reason. Did you understand that? 
I need some reactions. <laughs> Can you? Yes. You, did you, are you guys okay with that? Okay. Yes. That's the difference though. That's why this guy goes convergent. Become, become the zero so quickly. But this one is not. That's why it's become the divergent. Stuart's number is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the reason. Okay. So that's the difference I want you to understand. It. Okay. All right. Then one more thing. So this is a new test. It's called integral test. What's the integral test? So exactly it's mentioned say integral. So we're going to start taking the integral again. Okay. So what's the integral test means? Let's say function is continuous. Okay, that's the reason. That's, that's three conditions you have to always mention. Function is continuous. The, always your function is positive number. Then it's going to be decreasing from the one to infinity. The, if you have that conditions, it's satisfied. Then you can take the integral of the functions then if integral is going to be convergent, you can say summation is convergent. If integral is divergent, you can say summation is also divergent. So that's what this means. So pretty much what they say is let's take the integral. Let's see our integral become the convergent or our integral become the divergent. Then you can say summation is convergent, summation is divergent. So if you do the example, it's much, much easier to understand, okay? Because if you take the integral means, I'm finding the area under the curve, right? Integral meaning area. So if area is approaching the number, that means summation is also approaches. If area is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger forever, summation is also getting bigger and bigger and bigger forever. That means this is finding the area under the curve. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So look at this example. Yeah. So what's my f of x? This is my function. No? That's the functions. That should be my functions. Okay. So let function f of x is 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay. Because of the function, I'm going to use x. x squared plus 1. So make sure you have to mention three conditions is satisfied. So based on the that functions, can I say it's continuous from one to infinity? Can I plug in the one square, two square, three square, four square, four about the infinity? Can I do that? Yeah, it's a continuous function, right? Yes, this is continuous. So can I say all positive number happening? Don't you think so? It's a one square, two square, three square plus one. No? It's everything positive number. Yeah, it is positive number. But can I say decreasing? What do you think? If denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, fraction getting what? Smaller and smaller and smaller, right? right. I mean, you can unmute, or you can unmute, so I just want to make sure you understand that it's a decreasing, right? If the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, fraction getting smaller and smaller and smaller, yeah, it is decreasing. Does that make sense? You guys okay with it? Um, yes. One, two, infinity. This meaning x bar is become the one, two, forever infinity. Is this three condition is it satisfied or not? Yes, it is satisfied. So once condition is satisfied, so let's take the integral. So I'm gonna take the integral. So integral of the one to infinity of the functions, one over x squared plus one dx. Yeah. But again, can I take the infinity as an integral? We don't do that. What well, we did. Do you remember that? How do you do the infinity of the integral? That's a back to the chapter 7, no? Chapter 7? What did you say? So say again? Change it to t? Yes, limit, right? Limit t approaches infinity, the 1, 2, t, right? The 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. 
Do you remember that one? Okay, what's yeah. the disintegral? Do you remember the disintegral? Tangent inverse. Tangent inverse. So make sure don't forget the tangent inverse one. So limit, just hold on to it. Okay, we cannot do anything about the limit, right? So, but this is the tangent inverse, right? Tangent inverse x. This is just more formula, though. make sure you remember that. 1, 2, t, right? They just leave the limit. Okay, just leave the limit. Okay. Limit. t approaches infinity. Okay. Tangent inverse, plug in the t, right? The minus tangent inverse 1. Okay. Then, what's happening? t is going to infinity. Oh, t is going to be infinity. What's the tangent inverse infinity? I'm sure you should know it. What's the tangent graph say? What's the tangent graph say? Infinity? Yeah, this one, this guy, right? Yeah. This is a negative pi over 2, it's the positive pi over 2. If tangent goes infinity, what happened to my angle? Yeah, you said someone, someone said right, someone said right, doesn't yeah, pi over 2. Pi over 2, right? If tangent goes infinity mini, oh, it's a pi over 2. Oh, this guy, pi over 2, though. Pi over 2. Yeah. Then what's the tangent inverse one? If tangent angle is 1, what's the tangent angle is 1? What's angle is that? That's the inverse mean, right? Pi over 4. Pi over 4, that's it. Oh, this is a pi over 2 minus pi over 4. So pi over 2 minus pi over 4. So what's the answer? Pi over 4. Oh, four. Four. Which is convergent because you approach the number. Oh, its integral is convergent. Oh, this is convergent. But that's not the answer. That's not the summation is convergent. Summation is it's not the this sum. It's just telling you it's convergent means summation becomes the convergent. But that is not the sum. Okay, we just conclude joint our this guy, it's a convergent. It's approaches some number. Okay? So final answer is uh, by make sure you need a, what's the test you're using, uh, by integral test. Okay? Summations n equal one to infinity one over n square plus one is convergent. Yeah, so here it is. Professor, I have one question. Yeah, sure. In the very beginning when you said that 1 over s squared plus 1 is continuous, mm -hmm. uh, continuous, do you mean that no matter how much numbers we put in from whether 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mm -hmm. we're always going to get a, an answer? Is that what you meant? Yeah, it's, you there's no breaking point. Oh, like, okay. Right? If we have a 1 over x minus 1, we know that's not a continuous. Uh, minus 2 or something. Because I should not plug in the 2, right? That's the discontinuous. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. I cannot plug in the 2, that's a discontinuous. But this guy, I'm okay with whatever I can plug in. Right? Between 1 to infinity. That's the continuous means. Okay? Graph oh, okay. is, it's be the continuous. It's there, there's no breaking point. Oh, okay. That's okay. why we put 1 to infinity, right? That's right. 1 to infinity. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone, anyone else? Any questions? Did you understand the integral test? Okay. Okay. So, let's do one more integral test. And then we are moving on. Okay. Okay. So, well, this one is the easy one. So, let's do that one. Okay. Okay. F of x. Two over five x minus one, right? So what's the three conditions you have to mention? There's always three conditions you have to say. What's the first one I said? Continuous. Yes, continuous. But is that true? It is continuous. But from the one to infinity, as long as one to infinity, yes, you can say continuous. But which number I should not plug in? This guy. X should not be what? One. 
one fifth, right? I cannot plug in the one fifth, but after the after one, I can plug in whatever I want. Right? That's why I can say it is continuous. Continuous. What's the second one say? What's the second condition? We gotta know if it's positive or negative. Yeah. Can I say positive? It is positive if I plug in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, forever. Yeah, I wanna get positive. Yeah, it's be positive, right? Positive. Okay. There's one more. What did I say? Decreasing. Yeah, but can I say decrease? If I plug in the one, plug in two, three, four, five, it's a number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Is that true? What's happened to the yeah. denominator? Denominator getting bigger yeah. and the bigger and the bigger. Yeah, that's decreasing, right? Um, one to infinity. Okay? Uh, because of the, this one, no? start one to infinity. That's me. Okay? So now let's take the integral one to infinity to five x minus one, right? Dx. That I know again, I can take the integral for the infinity limit. Right? T approaches infinity 1 to T, 2 over 5x minus 1 dx. So to let you think about it. Are you guys remember that integral? Yeah, you could uh, separate the 2 and make it like 2 times 1 over 5x minus 1 and factor out that 2. Two, two, two is you can take out, take the outside. You can take it outside. Two is just a constant yeah. number. Though. Okay, I can say, yeah, limit. Two can be outside. But you guys remember that, that integral. The tangent? No, tangent is x squared. Tangent inverse is x squared. Oh no, ln 5x that, minus that's 1. That's right, that's right, that's right. Let okay, me make sure I refresh that. Again, limit nothing to do with it right now. Just leave it. Again, 2, again, nothing to do with it. This is, this guy. Natural log, what's that? 5x minus 1, right? If you take the natural log derivative, you go back to here, right? But, don't you remember what's happened to the inside? We need something. Divide by 5? That's right, because the chain rule happened, right? If the chain rule is a 5, I need the inverse. You guys okay for that? Where the 1 over 5 coming from? Okay, make sure you don't forget the 1 over 5. Though. Because yeah. chain rule happening here. If 5 is gonna happen, but 5 has to be cancelled. That's a 1 over 5. Okay. 1, 2, 2. Okay, then just take care of the limit. Okay. 2 over 5 is a constant, so I don't need to worry about it, okay? So 2 over 5 is constant, okay? Just think about natural log, I'm gonna plug in 5t minus 1, right? So plug in the t, the subtract natural log, I'm gonna plug in 1, right? 1, so 5 minus 1, that's 4, right? Then what's happen if, if, sorry, I should put t goes infinity. Right? So what's going on here? If t goes infinity, just as t goes infinity, right? Wouldn't the whole thing still be infinity because we have no idea where that's that right. This stop? is just forever the bigger and the bigger and the bigger, right? Infinity, but natural log, huge number is infinity, right? It's a log. Log is log graph is that one, right? Log. If if it goes bigger and bigger and bigger log, right? natural log graph, also getting infinity. So this whole thing is going to be infinity. Okay? So it's 2 over 5, infinity minus, okay? infinity minus natural log 4. So which means what? Infinity minus such a small number, which is 
infinity, right? It's huge number. Subtract such a small number, it's not gonna change anything. Oh, it's an infinity, which means, oh, it's a divergent. So its integral is, it's a divergent means my summation is, it's a divergent. Does that make sense? Okay, bye. Integral test. Okay, so make sure summation n equal 1 to infinity to 5n minus 1 is divergent. Any questions so far? You get it? Because we are moving on. Okay, today I have a lots of lots to talk about. We have to move on. Yes, let's go next one. Then this guy is important. Okay. Based on the power P. What happened to that convergent or divergent? So get n is become one, no? one, two, three. But p is also it's a, your power. So based on the p, what happened to the convergent or divergent? Okay. So let's think about this one. Number one, if p is a negative number, then what that mean? n equal one to infinity. 1 over n to the power p. Think about that way, no? like an example. Let me write for you. Okay. Summation n equal 1 to infinity 1 over n to the minus 3 or something. Okay. Think about my p is a negative number. So what does that mean, this guy? Okay. Summation n equal 1 to infinity n to power, negative 3 meaning just positive 3, right, if we flip it. So what's this guy? You put the 1 cube, 2 cube, 3 cube, 4 cube, 5 cube, 4, 6 cube, it's until infinity. What's going on here? This goes... So it's getting bigger? They're getting just bigger and bigger and bigger forever, right? So that's a divergent. Oh, this meaning if P is negative meaning it's a divergent. Oh, this is divergent. Okay. The number 2. That if p is zero, what happened? Right? Summation n equal one to infinity, one over n to the zero power. No? What's this guy? Okay. One. One, right? Oh, n equal one to infinity, n to the zero power is one. What's this guy? Do you understand what this means? There is no n, but there is a 1. What's that? This meaning is 1 forever. You have a 1 plus 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 1. Forever, let's add it. So what's going on? This is... Infinity? Infinity. It's a divergent. That's it. Because forever you're adding a one. Ever. Okay? One plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Forever until infinity. So that's why it sounds like divergent. So if you, even p equals zero, it's a divergent. Then number three. Then if p equals positive number, think about it. Especially p is bigger than 1. Okay. Summation n equal 1 to infinity 1 over n p. Okay. p. Did you remember that? Like this guy, n equal 1 to infinity 1 over n power 2. Like something p is bigger than 1. What do you think? This is a 1, 1 square, right? This is 1, 2 square. This is 1, 3 square. This is one, four square. Don't you see some this guy today? Did you, didn't you see that somewhere? If you go, page. Yeah, if you go faster page, flip over. What do I say? 
Ah, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I flip over too much. Okay. What did I say here? What's happening? Oh, it's a convergent. It's approaching a sum number. It is convergent. Because you approach zero so quickly. So answer is, oh, this is convergent. If n is bigger than one. Yeah, what happens if n is smaller than one? If it's smaller than one, which means it's still positive number, but it's smaller than one, which means fractions. So what happens if I have, you know, something like this, fractions? Diversion? So this is a, today we did, right? We had the same questions. Yeah. Don't you remember that this, today's, we just this guy? This is square root, right? It's one half. Oh, it's a divergent. Because it's not approach zero quick, quickly enough. Oh, that is divergent. Okay. Then now, here is conclusions. You see, if P equal P is less than zero, P is equal to zero, P is less than or equal to zero, it's everything divergent. As long as P is bigger than one, it's a convergent. So it's P is bigger than one is a convergent, but everything else is a divergent. Okay, so here is the rule. Okay, that's the next one is most important. Okay, I'm gonna flip over. Just to remember, if P is bigger than zero, it's be convergent. So this guy, it's called a P series. P series. If you're talking about some power P, okay, if you use if P is bigger than one, it will be convergent. But everything else, less than or equal to one, it's a divergent. Okay. So that's the, actually this technique we use all the time, it's called the P series test. So that's the one of the test, make sure, don't forget that one. So that's the, I have a list. If P is bigger than one, it will be that convergent. If P is less than or equal to one, it's a divergent. Okay, that's called P series. P series. Okay. Okay. Another test. Okay, today we did the integral test, right? Integral test we done. Okay. Make sure don't forget the three conditions. Always you gotta mention the three conditions. Okay. Here we are talking about the right now P series. Okay. It just so make sure power P. You're looking for the what's the power P happening? All right, so let's the example. Look at it. So what's my P? In this case, P equal what? Three, so what is that? It's a convergent or divergent. That's pretty much it, either. Which means, bigger than one, what do I say? Answer is convergent. convergent. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so well, those are the easy one. Okay. This is a piece. One third is a convergent or divergent, which one is that? Less than or equal to one, it's B. Divergent, right? Then what's my, my P, right? Here, P is square root of the two. What do you think? If my power P is square root of the two, it is convergent or divergent, which one is that? It's a bigger than one, right? It's bigger than one, so convergent? Yeah, it's big because about 1.4. Oh, it's big. Convergent. Okay. Yeah, let's think about that. What's my P? You gotta make sure you have to understand what's the P though. Because sometimes it's not clear what's the P. You have to figure out what's P here. What's my P in this case? What's this guy means? Two 
two and then one half power, right? What's that? If we put it together. This is two, two three times, over two. Two, yeah, because it'd be one plus one half, right? It's a three over two. So can you see here too? Same thing, right? Three and three, this is a three. Three over two, right? This one two. Yeah, it's four. Three over two. Yeah, what I mean this guy? It's a square root. Ah, sorry, not square root. It's summation n equal one to infinity one over. Right? It's a one over. It's just changing a two, three, four. First one is one. That's it's just a n three over two power. Is that make sense? Right? If I plug in the one. So one is not doesn't matter what you change, it's one is always one. Right? But if I plug in the two, so that's what I get. Right? If I plug in the three, that's what I get. So what's my P series in this case? What's my P? Three over two. Three over two, which is convergent. Convergent. Ah uh, no 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 bigger than one. Ah, oh, that's it, you sorry, right. Like, convergent. Yeah, good. Okay, convergent. Right. Any questions here? Did you understand that? Okay, here. Okay. Yes, make sure I don't forget there. Okay. Yes, now. Okay. Each test, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. The problem you guys have is, which test am I using? If I throw the bunch of the test, here's the problem you guys see. I see all the time. Oh my goodness, how, which test should I use? There are so many. I know I have to use one of them. How can I know it? Which test am I using, right? That's the problem you guys have. Because once you figure out which test, it's easy to use it. Because test by itself is not the hard one. Just so, which test should I choose? That's the hard part. Okay. So look at these questions. If I look, which test should I use? It? What's my choice here? So far, only what we did is divergent, geometric series, P series, integral test. Right. That's so far I learned. So which test should I use right now? Uh, clearly not the geometric series. Geometric series have to be something power n has to be happen. That's not gonna happen though. The clearly not the P series. I don't see any P is happening here. Just one more thing. Integral? Yes, P series is, that's it. It's gotta be one, one over. If without the one, don't use a P series. You cannot use it, yeah. So I will think about, yeah, maybe integral test. Maybe integral test, okay? Yeah, that's the integral test. Maybe you can try it. Okay, f of x, natural log x over the x is, what's the three condition I set? What's the three condition you gotta mention? Continuous, can I say continuous? Can I plug in one, two, three, four, five here? Can I do that? x equal to one, x equal to two, x equal to three, x equal to four. Yes. Yeah, it is continuously. Continuous. Yeah, what's the next one? Positive. positive. Can I say positive? X equal to one. Natural log one equals zero. Okay. If, if I plug in the two, three, four, five, can I say all the positive number happening? Yes. Yes. Because natural log graph, graph is you guys know, right? Just like that. That's the natural log, right? I know it's everything positive. Clearly denominator is positive. Positive. Yeah. Can I say what's the last things? Decreasing. Decreasing. Can I say decreasing? How can I know this is a decrease? How do you know it? this is a decrease? You have to think about it. You have to think about it. This is a decreasing. Because if I say natural log 1 over 1, right? 
natural log 2 over 2, natural log 3 over 3, natural log 4 over 4. Is this decreasing or not? Or you can use a graphing calculator to see the graph. Is this decrease or not? If this is decreasing, yes, you can say, oh, this is decreasing. Natural log 5 over 5. Is that number is going to decrease or not? What do you think? Natural log 3 divided by 3. That's 0 0.6, right? Natural log 4 divided by 4. Am I decreasing? Natural log uh, 5 divided by 5. Yeah. Yeah, slightly getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, I can say this is decreasing happening. Yeah, it's decreasing. Yeah, this is decreasing. Um, 1 to infinity. So I'm ready to take the integral test. Okay, but again, just to make sure you know how to take the integral. How do you do it? I limit t approaches infinity 1 to t natural log x over x dx. Okay, let you think about it. Can you take that integral? Do you have any idea how to take that integral? How do you do that? I want to make sure you guys know it, how to take that integral. This guy. Okay, chapter 11 is not too bad. It's really not too bad. And the integral is not too hard. It's compared to what chapter did, 7 you did. How do you take that integral? Let you equal what? X. LX. Now, what's the DU? You sub or just regular you sub? What's the DU say? If you take that derivative, what's that? 1 by X, right? Yeah, 1 by X DX, right? Yeah. Do I have a 1 by X DX? I do, don't you? 1 over X DX. Yeah. Oh, that's my DU. Okay, so pay attention to that part. Okay, so my integral is. Forget the 1 to t, we will take care of the later. Okay. So integral of, this is my u part, right? u, and this is our du, right? Oh, it's just this. Oh, integral u du. Right? That's the just u sub. This is my u, then this is my du. So what's the regular integral, which is 1 over 2 u squared? It's everybody know it. But I know you should be back to the x because my u is natural log x. Right? 1 over 2 natural log x squared. Then from 1 to t. Right? From 1 to t happening. So I should back to that u, become that, back to the natural log, x. Okay. So make sure you print back, because we are taking up the 1 to t. 1 to t should be the my value of the x. Okay, so now pretty much we are done. Okay. So 1 half is constant, I don't care. So it's b, natural log t square minus natural log 1 square, right? Then t is goes infinity, right? As t goes infinity, what's really happening? That is it. Wouldn't you still get divergent because in putting the infinity, we're still that's not right. sure what exactly? Mm -hmm. This is a bunch of, the, that's a huge number, minus zero, 
right? Natural log 1 is 0. It's a huge number minus. This is a 0, right? It's, a, it's a infinity minus 0. Answer is actually, yeah, pretty much infinity. That's why it's divergent. So everybody knows it's divergent. So what's the test say by which test we use? Integral? Yeah, integral test or integral test by by integral test. This one is it's a divergent. Okay. Summation n equal one to infinity L n n over the n is divergent. Any questions here? Let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, professor? Uh, professor? Yeah, what's up? I'll go first. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do we have to say like which test we put? Yes, please. You should say, you should say, you gotta say, especially the ink exam, because it's not the ink class exam. If I don't see your work, which test are you using, I will mark off. I'm gonna check your work because otherwise I don't know which test because it's pretty much the web assign say it's convergent or divergent. If we just put the convergent for the guess, I will definitely take the mark off. Okay, you gotta put the which test you're using. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, go ahead. Next one. Oh, yeah, and uh, Professor? Yeah. So, uh, only just because I forgot. Um, for our upper and lower bound, I know why we would put t, but for one, is that coming from the n equal one, or is it coming from something else? Yeah, coming from the n equal one. That's it. Yeah. Y yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, because sorry. start of one. That's why it's n. Yeah. It's e one. 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 Yeah. One to infinity. It's coming from. Yeah. That one. Right there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey. Any questions here? Okay, because we are moving on next section today. Okay, so it's 11.4. Okay. So the model are same, so you can do the integral test. Okay, I will, I will let you guys practice it. Okay, next test. So there are two tests. It's called a comparison test. It's direct comparison test and the limit comparison test. There are two comparison tests. Yeah, well, today I'm gonna cover these two comparison tests. Okay. So comparison, first one, we're gonna do direct comparison test. This guy, actually it's a little harder to use it. Direct comparison. In limit comparison test, this is the easier one. This is always easier. Direct comparison test, this one is a little harder, this guy. But sometimes you don't have a choice, you have to use that one. But most of the time, I would recommend using a limit comparison test because that's like, much easier to use it. Yeah? All right. Yeah, how do you do the direct comparison test? It's, what's a direct comparison test? Again, both has to be positive. That's the only condition you need. It. Both has to be called with positive, then, okay. A of n, this is your questions. B of n, this is you going to make it yourself. I will show you how to make it yourself. But A of n is always your original questions given. Okay. Then B of n, you are going to make. Okay. So how do you make it? I will show you how to make it later. But let's say I make the B of n. Then B of n is convergent. Okay, so you made up the something B of n, n and the B of n is convergent, convergent, and B of n is always, always bigger than the A of n. Did you understand that? This guy say convergent, which means if Upper bound is something convergent, meaning A of N has to be convergent. Because B is approaching some number. That means A of N it doesn't have a choice. Because A is always smaller than B. 
So B approaching some number have to be A have to be approaching a some number as well. That's why A of N is also convergent. Does that make sense? Yeah, now there is another case. Let's say you made up the B of N. The B of N is divergent. Divergent meaning it's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Forever. So that means if B of N is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger, let's say B is always smaller than A. That means I don't have a choice. A has to be also bigger and bigger and bigger. Because B is getting huge number, then also A is always bigger than B. So I don't have a much choice. A has to be always going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. So A is divergent. A is divergent. Okay, make sure. Did you see the inequality symbol difference? Huh? This and this is not the same. Because you guys, some students always messed up. You gotta pay attention to the inequality symbol, inequality symbols. This one, there is a boundary above, upper bound. So it's upper bound is convergent, meaning it's lower has to be the convergent. This guy, did you see? It's a lower bound is going to be infinity, meaning the upper is have to be infinity. Right? That's the inequality symbol. Set. Make sure this inequality symbol is a key. Don't use the same one, it's not the same. So we will practice how to use it so you understand much better. T because if you just listen to what this rule set, okay, it's, it's hard to understand it, okay? So if you do example, uh, you much, much, much understand, easy to understand it, yeah. Uh, any so questions? Professor, yeah. so A of N is the original function, right? That's A of N is always your original functions. A is your questions. But B, you have to make it. Yeah. B of N, you are going to make. So I will show you how to make. Because okay. the harder part for the, this test is, how can I make the B of N? That's that everybody had a harder time to finding a B of N or making a B of N. But I will show you how to make it. Yeah? Make sure this is your original question A of N. This is your A of N. So I should make the sum B of N. So I'm going to try to make the sum B of N. Okay? So, Look, okay. This is the first time, just, just pay attention, okay? Here's my A of N, okay? A of N. Which is 5 over 2N squared plus 4N plus 3, okay? So I have A of N. Yeah, let's find the B of N. But it's gotta be bigger. Some bigger number, I wanna find it. Bigger than the this guy. So how do you find it? Bigger than the this fractions. It's always bigger than the fraction. How are we gonna find it? That's the hard part. Because the fractions, right? So think about it. If you want to make something big, okay. Uh, listen carefully, okay. Before the this guy. One over two. Ah, oh, sorry. One over five. One over four. Which one is bigger? One over four. Yeah, but why? How do you know one over four is bigger? Because. Small denominator? Yeah, small denominator is always bigger, right? So concept, the most easy way to make the concept is let's make the smaller denominator, smaller than, smaller denominator, right? So if I say, if I have n plus 1, how do you make the bigger fractions? Most easy one, let's make the smaller denominator. So what's my smaller denominator? Oh. That's the most of it. I want to get rid of the one. I want to make it a smaller denominator. Does that make sense? 
this is a smaller, if I take away one, that's definitely my smaller denominator happening. Everybody understand it. Okay, if, because you need this concept. You need that concept. You guys okay so far? I, I need some reactions. Everybody okay or what? Did you understand yeah. this one? Right? Yeah. I'm gonna try to make the smaller denominator. So look at it. So how do you make the smaller denominator? Okay, numerator don't change it. If you start to changing a boss, it makes so hard. So if you have a five, just keep the five. Yeah. So I just wanna make the smaller denominator. Smaller denominator. I don't want a bunch of the extra stuff. I wanna get rid of that guy. Oh, that's small enough. Right? I just take away 4n plus 3. Oh, I get a smaller denominator. I wish, well, I'm gonna tell you why we are going to do it. Okay, so I wanna get it with the extra stuff. I just wanna keep the 2n square. So this is my a of n. So this is my b of n. Yes. So that's my b of n happening. Okay. So I make the B of N. But now, okay, this part I made it. So I have to say, this is convergent. Because otherwise it doesn't work. Doesn't work the this direct comparison test. So I wanna say this is, it's a convergent. Okay? So summations, uh, everybody copy right now, copy this one. Okay, summations, N equal one to infinity, b of n summation n equal 1 to infinity this is my b on 5 over 2n square okay. yeah what can i say this is a convergent how do you know this is going to be convergent looking at the uh, exponent of 2 yes did you see that what's that most resistance do you remember the p series Ah, uh, what's my p? Okay, 5 over 2, don't worry about it. Okay, I can take away the constant outside. So I don't care the 5 over 2. Okay. So what's my p set? What's my p series p set here? P. Isn't it the right con the right, uh, which one was it? Oh no, never mind. Yeah, not yet, not yet, not yet. This is, I want to make sure what's my P series set. P set, in this case, what? My P is, what's my power P? P code. Two, right? Oh, two. Two. So if P is bigger than one, what I say? If P is bigger than one? Uh, com convergent. Oh. oh, if the P okay. is bigger than one, because it's a two. So I know it's by P series. Okay. It's a convergent. So now, did you see? Oh, I said my B of, name, B of N is a convergent. This is just a middle of the step though to make the, my conclusion. So we make the B of N. B of N is always bigger than A of N. We get that also B of N is convergent. We get that. So what's the conclusion then? Its conclusion is A of N is convergent. So by, okay, final answer. This is my final answer. By, we call direct comparison test. DCT. Direct comparison test. Direct comparison test to set summations, this guy, right? n equal 1 to infinity 5, 2n square plus 4n plus 3 is convergent. So you're going to start using a lot of tests to make the final conclusions. It's not only always one test, it's not going to happen. Sometimes you have to use different tests to make the conclusions. So we would have to write both of them in the yes, exam? Yes, you have to use the both. Okay, you have to use the P series for the, this B of N part. 
The final, final conclusion is this one, right? Direct comparison test. It's a bit of converted. Oh, okay. Okay. Any? Uh, yes, go ahead. So for the B of N, mm -hmm. for the denominator, mm -hmm. we have to keep the exponent and keep, then yes. the other one? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because most or do we of... Have to, mm -hmm. Or we have to get, like, all the, ex uh, the variable. No, 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 no. I want to try to make the less denominator. I don't want to do that. Lots of denominator because less denominator makes bigger fraction, right? Bigger. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's the this mean, right? If denominator is smaller, means fraction bigger. So if we have an extra one, I'm gonna get rid of the one. Okay. Oh. Whatever the extra stuff, let's take it away. So makes bigger fractions. You don't want to make a bunch of the denominator. It makes mess. The P series never works. Do you know? I want to make the only one P, one power. That's the P series works for me all the time. Okay? You don't want to have extra stuff. So P series never works. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Let's practice another one. Hopefully you understand better. Okay. I just need one more, couple more. Okay. This guy? Yeah. Okay, this is my error. Okay. 1 over n cubed plus 8. Can you find what's my bigger one? I want to find something bigger. So it's easy to make that you know, direct comparison test. What's that? This is my a of n. What's my little bigger one? What I said? Make the denominator smaller. 1 over? n cubed. n cubed, that's it. Oh, I know it's, if you take away 8, it's a n cubed is always bigger, right? It's a, oh, that's my b of n. Okay. Summation n equal 1 to infinity b of n. No? Summation n equal 1 to infinity 1 over n cubed. Okay, what's my P set? P equal? 3. 3, that's it. So if P equals 3, what's my set? By P series? It's convergent. Convergent, it's yes. P series set uh, convergent. Yeah, more we did exactly. I got the convergent, right? There, it's convergent. So what's the final answer set? Uh? Its original equation is convergent. Oh, by direct comparison test, okay. n equal 1 to infinity 1 over n cubed plus 8, it's convergent. Professor, I yes. had another question. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, say so you know how we started off with a, a n mm -hmm. with n q plus 8 in the denominator mm -hmm. say if we had n to the power of 4 plus n squared mm -hmm. also as well mm -hmm. how would we make that smaller how do you make it smaller or bigger which one uh so say if uh, we started with like 1 over n to the power of 4 plus n squared plus n cube mm -hmm. i mean plus n cube plus n squared plus 8 mm -hmm. how that, would that's we something make like that this? smaller mm -hmm. Yeah, how would we take that smaller to get BN? You you want a smaller or bigger? Which one? Uh, you want to make oh, the bigger one? Oh yeah, bigger, sorry. sorry. Bigger one means you just take away this guy. Oh, okay. So you, you just, just take, take, it, right? take the whatever the extra stuff. If you have, right? If you have a less denominator, right? That makes bigger fractions. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I, I see it now. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at this one, don't worry about that one. Don't you see that these questions? Did you see that these questions today? Yes. We did this guy, right? So which test did I use it? 
we use this last example I think we did the last page right uh, right here right seven we did integral test I mean you can do it exactly you can do the integral test if you want to do it but we can do different tests as well so it's test applies so many different ones but you just choose which one is best or which one is most easy to apply okay. so I'm gonna use different tests this guy okay. natural log n over the n okay. that's my original one a of n no? a of n Do you remember answer was divergent? It's not a convergent. Answer was divergent. Okay. So I'm looking for divergent, right? So now, did you see that? If it is divergent, what am I looking for? I'm looking for smaller number, not the bigger number. I'm looking for something smaller. I'm looking for smaller. How do you find the smaller one? Remove the n. Again. Okay. Yes. Combinator? One by n. Can you see that? Because this one getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Did you understand what this mean, right? If we have a 2 over n square, everybody knows it's 1 over n square. If denominator doesn't change, if numerator makes smaller, I know it, this one is smaller because numerator is small. So I'm not going to change the denominator. I'm going to change the numerator to make it smaller. Okay. So this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Though. So I'm going to make the just smallest number one. One. So this is my B of N. So I want to make something smaller. I want to try to make the something smaller. Okay. Did you understand that, this part? Okay, that's my B of N happening. Okay. Then what I say, I find the B of N, to make sure my B of N is divergent. Then you can say A of N is also divergent. So this guy, okay. B of N, okay. Again, what's my power P here? What's my P? One, one. P is one. What I say, if p equal 1, by power series, uh, by powers, power series, uh, yeah, if p equal 1, oh, it's a divergent. Okay. Oh, bye. Okay. Power, by power series, oh, it is divergent. So this goes huge number, the infinity, that means I don't have a choice. This one has to go to infinity, right? This goes divergent, infinity. This one has to go to infinity because it's always bigger. So by a direct comparison test set, n equal one to infinity natural log n over the n is divergent. Okay, any questions here? Uh, professor. Yes. So, if the new, if the denominator is uh, just one variable, we have to change the numerator. No, 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 no. No, it doesn't mean that way. It doesn't mean that way. Are you looking for the di smaller number or bigger number? Uh, if we are looking for just, something smaller number, right? This is the original question. So I'm looking for something smaller. So I'm not going to change the denominator. If you want to make the smaller number, I want to make the numerator smaller. Okay. Right? If we, 
Right? If you make the new model the smaller, right? If you have a two, make the one, I know this is a smaller number. Right? I'm not gonna touch the denominator. Denominator is gonna, not gonna touch it. So that's what I'm saying. Denominator, I'm not gonna touch it. I wanna just make the smaller number. Because this one goes bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's why I just make the one. I know this is a smaller than this, this guy. We are trying to make something smaller, something smaller. That's a little hard part to everybody else. Well, am I looking for the smaller number or am I looking for the bigger number? That's the hard part for this test, actually. Any questions or are you guys okay? I know this one is not too, not too easy to understand what means smaller or bigger or like, you know, how do you know, are we looking for smaller number? How do you know, are we looking for the bigger number? That's, that's you need more experience to look at the questions often. So you guys understand the more, you know, quickly, am I, am I looking for the bigger number or am I looking for the smaller number concept? And it's because of the first time, it's not so easy right now. But definitely we do the more example. Yeah. All right, so I gotta move on next one. Okay, any any other questions here so far? <laughs> okay, do the homework. I will they put the discussion board, I will help you guys what the mean for the smaller bigger means again. Okay. There there's uh, one more little bit uh, so go ahead. Yes. Uh sorry about this. Uh, go ahead, question. go ahead. Uh, so for the direct comparison test, can we just mm -hmm. like do it not using that one first, then? Yeah. So we could use other tests first, Yeah, yeah, then. you can use other tests. This test, we did a different test, right? It, integral test, we did it. You can do the integral test. But I mean, if you know the direct comparison test, it's probably the most shorter step. I mean, it's only two lines we did. Compares you know, that integral test we did. But, I mean, both way works. Just whatever you, uh, you are comfortable, oh. that's fine. Okay? It just choose the best one for you. You good? Yes. Okay. Okay, so sorry, I gotta do the last one today. Another one is limit the comparison test. This guy, it's much, much easy to use it. <laughs> Direct comparison test is not easy to use, actually. Limit the comparison test is much, much easy to use. Again, you have an original one, A of N, that I have to find the B of N again. But this one is much easy to find it. That's why this is easy to use. I will show you how to quickly find it, okay. B of N. Then it's called the limit the comparison test, meaning I have to take the limit. I don't have a choice. So you're gonna find the B of N and let's take the limit a of n over the b of n and then you find some limit limit is positive finite number then both convergent or both divergent meaning after you take the limit then if b of n is convergent means a of n is convergent if b of n divergent means a of n is divergent so take the limit, check the b of n, then you can conclude what the a of n is. We do example so it's, you understand much better. Then why this one makes easier is, I will show you how to find the b of n quickly, okay? Find the b of n, keeping only highest power of the both numerator and the denominator. Highest power of the both of the numerator and the denominator. Okay. So look at these questions. Look at this guy. Okay. This is my original A of n. This is A of n. Okay. The one over two n minus one. Yeah. Okay. So what's the b of n in this case? Is Keep the only highest power of the new both numerator and the denominator. Oh, well, numerator I have a one, so I don't have a choice. One, okay. The denominator 
is oh that's my highest two to the power n that's it so keep the whatever the highest the top and the bottom that's all that you're doing okay so here's my b of n then what i have to do is let's take the limit okay next one i'm gonna take the limit okay limit n goes infinity okay? a of n over the b of n okay? so which means limit n goes infinity a of n double right eh? one over two n minus one then make sure this one is denominator is one over b of n right so this one i have to flip over right does that make sense Yeah. This is 1 over b of n, so I need to flip over that one. Then what's the this limit? Do you remember the this limit? Are you guys remember the this limit? What are you looking at the power? It's the same power n and n. What I say, if you have the same power top and the bottom, what's my limit to say? Limit is always coefficient, right? What's the coefficient here? It's 1 over 1, no? Okay. If we have the same power top and the bottom, what's the limit to say? Limit to say it's always what's the, your coefficient, which is 1 over 1. That the answer is 1. That's pretty much it. Okay? Because of the same power, so you can just keep the 1 over 1. 1. Okay? So, oh, I find the limit is a positive finite number because this is my positive finite number which is one that's the l okay so finally here's my final answer what's my b of n is this convergent or divergent okay. so now summation n equal one to infinity one over two of n which means n equal 1 to infinity, 1 over 2 to the power n. Okay. Which test should I use here? I want to make sure you guys know it. What's that? Which test am I using? How do you know this is a divergent or convergent? Which test is that? Divergent? Yeah. <laughs> divergent test? If you use divergent, meaning if n goes infinity though if n goes infinity what happened though? if you use divergent test n goes in infinity 1 over 2 to the n power what's my getting that's the divergent test set right if n goes infinity n goes huge number 1 over 2 to the infinity, what's the you getting? 1 over 2 to the huge power, no? What are you getting? Am I getting what? 1 over, you know, 1 million or something, right? If we put a huge power. So it's almost what? Zero, right? Yeah. Zero. What I said doesn't work. If not equal to zero, it's a divergent. If equal equal to zero, doesn't say anything. So divergent test doesn't work. I cannot do it. This is not a divergent test. This is, but so divergent test is out. What's the another test we have? Did you see the power? P series. No, P series is not the power. P series means exactly you have a power P. I don't see the power can, P. Can she use the, the geometric That's series? Right. This is a geometric series. Right? Every single time, what are you doing? Time is by one half, right? This is yeah. one over two to the power n meaning one over two. Next one, one over two to the power two. One over two to the power three. One over two to the power four. This means every single time, you, what are you doing? One over two, one over two, one over two, right? That's the geometric series. If you see the power n, pretty much geometric, though. 
Oh, time is by one over two, one over two, one over two. Oh, my R is one over two. One, by putting a one in the exponent, you get one half, which that, is in between negative one and one. That's it, that's it. So, what's the geometric series set? If between negative one to one. Convergent. Convergent. Oh, this is by geometric. It's a convergent, right? Do oh. we have to write the limit uh, comparison test? So, like the yes, other yes, yes. This is how to find the B part. We got that convergent. So now, final answer is what's my A part, right? So by final answer by this is called the limit comparison test. By limit comparison test, it both the convergent or both divergent. So, it's one is convergent, meaning the other one has to be convergent. So, original one, and it got one to infinity, one over two n minus one is also convergent. Did you understand? Okay, here. Yeah. You got any questions here so far? I know it's a. Uh, it's... So, professor? Yes. So, we have to use the limit of an over bn first. Mm -hmm. We have to have the. But this one is conditions. You have to take the limit first. And the limit is exist. If the limit does not oh. exist, you cannot use test this at all. You ha have to have a limit. Limit exists, then you can try to convert and test. Well, you know, limit to comparison test. Okay. Yes, let's do the last question today. Right. Okay, let's do one more limit to comparison test. Did you see how messy is it? This one, not too bad. I know this guy is so messy. How can I know this is a convert and a divergent? Is something messy for the power n? We pretty much use limit to comparison test. It's too messy here. Right. So make sure here is my A of N. Then two N square plus three N over square root five plus N to the power five. Okay. Yes. How do you find the B of N again? It's not hard to do, but they say, how do you find the B of N? Keep highest power of the both top and the bottom. Numerator there. Okay, what's my highest power top? 2N squared, right? What's the highest power bottom? Oh, square root of and to the power of five. That's all you need. That's my B of N. B of N. To make sure you have to have a limit because that's why I call the limit to comparison test. Oh, let's take the limit. Okay, so I'm gonna take the limit. The limit. N goes infinity. A of N over the B of N. Okay. The limit. N goes infinity. Here's my A of N. Okay. 2n square plus 3n over the square root 5 n to the power 5. The b of n by the denominator, right? 1 over, so I know I gotta flip over. I gotta flip over. Okay. n to the power 5, 2n square. Okay. Right. I know this is a really messy, messy limit we are talking about, but to be honest, it's not so bad. Okay, so let me rewrite it a little nicer limit. N goes infinity. Right? So, 2n squared plus 3n, I'm gonna keep it. So, then I'm gonna put the 2n squared, this part, in the denominator. Okay, so you guys copy it. Okay. 
Then there is another new model, right? And it's the power five. Okay. Then I'm gonna put this guy under that. So I'm gonna make the non radical and the radical together. Okay, so let's copy it. Wait, so what exactly happened to the denominator of 2n squared again? I'm sorry. 2n squared? I wrote it here. Yeah. So, I put the 2n squared plus 3. Underneath is 2n squared. I just switch it. Switch the order. Switch the order. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, and this yeah. is just a time zone. That's why I can switch the order. I just want to make sure non-radical one and the radical one, it just be, you know, organized. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. But why am I doing this? Forget this part. Okay. Look at the top and the bottom. Ah, are you guys still copying? Look at the top and the bottom. What's my exponent here? Same degree 2 and 2, right? Oh, it's a same degree. What I say? If it is the same degree, what's my limit to say? Coefficient. Oh, it's a 2 over 2. Oh, here's my coefficient. Okay. 2 over 2. 2 and 2. Did you see? This is my same degree again, right? Radical n to the power 5. Radical n to the power 5. Oh, it's the same degree again. So what's my limit to say? What's my coefficient here? 1 by 1. 1 and 1? Yeah. So what's my answer, this limit? One. It's one. Oh, that's one. That's why it's be the limit is here, right? Positive finite numbers. That's exactly I got the limit one. This is your class. Did you do this today? Did you do this today? Thank you. Oh, yes, I did. No, no, I invite. Invite mm -hmm. to the non-viewer. Viewer. I see. Yeah, because it's the same. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna. That's why I'm, I want to do the YouTube update. Oh, you want to tell it was recorded? Yeah. So I'm gonna. Pass. Okay. Sorry, sorry, guys. Okay, last step. Okay, last step. Okay. Okay. Now we get this part, right? So I wanna make sure is a both positive, both convergent, and both divergent. So look at the BN. Look at the BN. Right? Because A N is messy. That's why we're gonna check the order is BN. So what's the bn set? Right? n equal 1 to infinity b of n, right? n equal 1 to infinity to n square over square root of the n to the power 5. Okay. I know it's too messy, but that's not so bad. Okay. Constant 2, I don't care. Okay. 2, we can take away. 2, summation n equal 1 to infinity. n square power 5, right? I know it doesn't look like which test should I use, right? I know I don't know which test am I using for that one. But we can do it. We can do it. Because only I have an n. That's why this makes it easy for us. Okay? Only n to the power 2, the square root of the n to the power 5, can I simplify here? Right? You can be very as n to the power 5 over 2. That's it. Okay. So n square and n to the 5 over 2. But can I simplify here? Yeah, we can, right? How do you simplify the that power? Moving the n to the power 2 to the bottom. Yeah. So. One over, right? Uh, I just don't want to simplify this part. I don't want to see that n is both. Okay, n square and the n negative five over two power, right? If you just simplify it, okay? because you're gonna subtract the exponent, right? So what do you get? N to the power of one half. Yeah, n to the 4 over 2, it's negative 1 fourth. Oh, yeah, negative 1 half, sorry. 
or negative one half, sorry, my bad, my one half, right? Negative one half, right? I just need to simplify the exponents. Then, finally, what's my rule set? Right? Which one should I use for the that part? Oh, the P series? That's right, P series of, especially I can put in the down, right, this guy. To stay out, n equal 1 to infinity, 1 over n, 1 half, right? Hey, if we put the negative, it's denominator. Oh, here's my part P series happening. What's my P? P is 1 half. So what's the P series say? If P is bigger than, uh, well, bigger than 1 component, but if smaller than 1 or equal 1, divergent. So which one? Average. Yeah, by P series, it's divergent. Okay, so finally, B of N, we end up the divergent meaning. Original question is, it is divergent. Divergent. Okay, by, which test am I using? LCT. Okay, limit the comparison test, yes. LCT, okay. Limit to comparison test, summation n equal 1 to infinity, 2n square plus 3n over square root 5 plus n to the 5 is divergent. That's the answer. <sighs> we made it today. Quick. <laughs> okay, any questions here, guys? What do you think? You guys okay? So far so good. So far so good? Are you guys surviving? <laughs> I know it's a, it's a lot of lots of tests. That's why it's a test by itself. It's not a hard one. Chapter 11 is not too hard. It's just to make sure which test you are really using it. You have to understand which test am I applying right now. Where can we find the uh, test uh, where she Again? What can we find a test worksheet like the one that has all the the names of the tests? Can oh, that, oh that, that she, sorry, sorry. I thought I posted, but I think I didn't. I'm gonna paste it tonight, so oh, you okay. can go to the web assign. There you can you can look at this test. Okay, you can oh, okay. you can take it. Okay, that one. Okay, you can print out or you can look at it. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to post it tonight. Sorry, I didn't. I don't know why it, it just didn't show up on the web assign. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, yes, I will stop today. I think we did pretty much enough. Okay, so we have three more tests coming. That's we're gonna do the Tuesday. Okay, so Tuesday, we're gonna finish all the three tests. They complete every test. Okay, then we do more example. Yeah. Okay. Would you offer the next week? Yes, uh, do you guys have a Office hours? I can do Monday if you need office hours. Uh, office hours Monday. You guys wanna two thirty is better for you guys? Two thirty is fine. Two thirty is fine? Okay, so I will set up the office hours two thirty. I think that's good for us. Yeah. So that's the two thirty office hours. You good? Okay. Hi right, guys. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Have a nice weekend and uh, study homework. Okay. You guys start homework. All right. Bye, guys. Okay. I'm going to.